In this video, we want to begin to talk about linear transformations, but in order to understand linear transformations, we must make sure we understand matrix transformation. What exactly is a matrix transformation? Well, a matrix transformation is a function. So before we talk specifically about a matrix transformation, let's just talk about a function. Let's say I have f of x equals x plus 2. Well, if I have, say, 1 and 2 in my domain or pre-image, then 1 would map to 3 and 2 would map to 4. And what is this other side called? Well, it's called the codomain or the image. So again, that's all a function. We're talking about mapping a value to another value. So a matrix transformation is a mapping. It is a function. It acts upon vector x by multiplication by a and maps to b. Well, those values should all look familiar because we've been dealing with ax equals b. And that's exactly what we're talking about here for a matrix transformation is we're going to be transforming vector x by multiplication by matrix A to map to B. Now keep in mind that it's very possible that we're going to go from one dimension to another dimension. So in my example that I'm going to work through with you, x is in R2. Once I multiply it by A, I'm going to have a result that's in R3. So it could be that I'm transforming it from R2 to R2, or I could be um, in another, uh, another set. So let's take a look at my example. Uh, actually, before I do that, let's talk very quickly about this notation. Again, we're looking at T of X. T of X is just our function and our function we're using t because it's a transformation. So t of x is a rule that assigns each vector x in Rn to some vector t of x in Rm. And this is how we would write that. Vector t maps from Rn to Rm. Or again looking back at our ax equals b, we might say that x is mapped to a times x. So let's go ahead and do this example. If I have x and a, then I'm trying to find ax. And so how would I do that? I would take 1 times 2 plus 4 times 1. And I would take negative 2 times 2 plus 3 times 1. And I would take 0 times 2 plus 1 times 1. So ax is 6, negative 1, 1. And again, I started with something in R2. I ended with a result that's in R3. So it's just a mapping or a function. Let's take a look at this example together. I have a function t that is mapping R2 to R3. So even before they ask me any questions, it's very clear to me that u is going to be in the domain. But b, because it's in R3, is obviously going to be in the codomain. So for part a, it says find tu, the image of u under t. And so what this is saying, tu, t of u, is we know that t of x is defined by a times x. So t of u is defined as a times u. So I'm going to take a and I'm going to multiply it by u, just as I did in my last example. And again, I know that my result is going to be a vector, um, a column vector with three entries because I'm mapping to R3. So let's go ahead and do this. I'll go ahead and change colors here. And again, I'm just doing matrix multiplication. So 1 
times 2 plus negative 3 times negative 1. And then I'm continuing. 3 times 2 plus 5 times negative 1. And continue, negative 1 times 2, 7 times negative 1. And so what I end up with, let me get my bracket back that I deleted on accident. I end up with my vector 5, 1, negative 9. And again, what I've done is I've taken 2, negative 1 and mapped it to 5, 1, negative 9. So something in R2 mapped it to something in R3. My second part of my example says find an X in R2 whose image under T is B. So again, at the beginning before we started, I said, hey, this is clearly in the codomain. So essentially we're saying that A times some unknown X is equal to B. And my job is to find X. So how am I going to do that? Because I already know A. Let me get a color here. I already know that A is 1, negative 3, 3, 5, negative 1, 7. I'm saying, what am I going to multiply it by in order to come up with 3, 2, negative 5? So how am I going to solve this? Well, lucky for us, we're really good at this, or should be by now. So I'm going to erase some of this because I only have so much room on this page. And what I'm going to do is turn this into an augmented matrix and just do some row operations. So I'm going to keep 1, negative 3, 3, I want below that to be zeros. So negative 3 times 1 plus 3. Negative 3 times 3 is 9 plus 5 is 14. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9 plus 2 is negative 7. I'm just going to add the rows 1 and 3 together. So that gives me a 0 here, 4 here, negative 2 here. And my next step, I can see that row 2 and row 3 are essentially, one of them, they're essentially the same row. So I've got 1, negative 3, 3. This guy I'm going to take times 1 7th. And I can say clearly that this guy, if I add negative 2 of my new row 2 to row 3, I end up with 0. And so it makes sense that R3, I'm sorry, that X3 would be a free variable or that would not be assigned because we know that we're finding an X in R2. So my result has to be in the same format as U, a column vector with two entries. So if I take it a little bit further, then I'm going to end up, obviously these are going to remain zeros. This is 1 and negative 1 half. And if I then add 3 of that new row 2 to row 1, I get 1. 3 times 1 plus negative 3 is 0. 3 times negative 1 half is negative 3 halves, plus 3 is positive 3 halves. So what is my result? My result is that I have a vector x that is 3 halves negative 1 half. That is my result. And again, the next question might be, is there more than one x whose image under t is b? And of course, we would have to say no because this is clear that we have just one unique solution. We don't have a free variable. Yes, we had this x3 down here, but there was no x3 because we know that our result is just in R2, so there's going to be two entries. So there's no free variables. They're both assigned. They're both basic variables, and therefore that it, there is only one x whose image under t is b. Here's a practice for you to try on your own, 
As you can see, we have a figure at the bottom, and it is a square, and the coordinates of that square are 0, 2, oops, 0, 0, 2, 0, and 2, 2. What I'd like you to do is to transform that figure under the function t, if tx is defined as a times x, and a is given to us here, I would like you to do a transformation, a geometric transformation of that figure. So if you would, press pause, try this question on your own. When you're done, press play to see how you did. So essentially all I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of the points, 0, 0, 0, 2, 2, 2, and 2, 0, and multiply them by a to find the new transformation. Now I'm not going to show any work for 0, 0, because it's pretty clear to me that I'm just going to end up back at 0, 0 again, because if I multiply something by 0, I get 0. So now I'm going to take 1, 3, 0, 1, multiplied by 0, 2, and see what my result is. So that's going to give me 0 plus 6, which is 6, and 0 plus 2, which is 2. So this point, 0, 2, has moved to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, right here. So this point has mapped to this point. Let's do another point. I have the point 2, 2. So I'm going to take matrix A multiplied by 2, 2, and it gives me 2 plus 6, which is 8, and 0 plus 2, which is 2. So that point now maps to 8, 2, which is here. So this point has mapped to this point. And again, my initial point down here just mapped to itself, so it did not move at all. So let's do that last point, 2, 0. So I have 1, 3, 0, 1 times 2, 0. And that gives me 2 plus 0, which is 2, and 0 plus 0, which is 0. So 2, 0. So again, that point has mapped to itself. So what happened to my figure that was a square? Well, this is now, oops, I did that wrong. Let me erase. This now goes just like, oops, poor, poor drawing, but you get the idea. What I'm now dealing with is a parallelogram. So I had a square and I transformed it using matrix A and ended up now with a parallelogram. And this is actually called a shear transformation because um, you can almost imagine if the wind was blowing this square over, it um, has now turned into a parallelogram. So this is used quite often in graphic design. 